Do you know Tesla Gigafactory in Nevada's battery capacity? Friends, Tesla Gigafactory in Nevada now produces 13 million battery cells per day. The Science Channel got access to Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada for its new show called Super Factories, giving us a very rare new look inside the plant. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Tesla Gigafactory in Nevada was the first major step in Tesla's effort to secure battery cell supply for its ambitious growth. The automaker partnered with Panasonic to deploy new battery cell production capacity at the facility and Tesla used those cells to build battery packs for its vehicles and energy storage products. When originally announced the plan for the factory, Tesla was talking about the plant producing 105 gigawatt hour of battery cells per year and 150 gigawatt hour of battery packs per year once completed. However, the factory is currently about 30% complete and Tesla hasn't expanded the facility for years as both the automaker and Panasonic have focused on optimizing the current production capacity. We haven't had a good look inside the plant Giga, uh, Giga factory for years, but in Super Factory's first episode last night, they visited Gigafactory Nevada. They wrote in description saying, special access to Tesla's record-breaking Gigafactory reveals its bold ambition to build one of the most advanced cars in the world. This cutting-edge facility is one of the world's largest representing the frontier of engineering innovation. End of the quote. In the segment, they stated state that the factory, Gigafactory, produces 13 million individual battery cells per day. There isn't much new to learn for those who are familiar with the project, but there is some nice footage. That's about it. So what I'm doing is uh, you are uh, you can see the footage in the description of this video and I recommend you watching. But keep listening because I have very interesting information coming up and then you're welcome to watch the footage. Now, uh, the rest is kind of infuriating for a Tesla fan like talking about the Model 3 and showing a Model S and Model X and then referring to Model 3 as M3. When they refer to Fremont factory as the Model 3 assembly plant, uh, I literally kind of cringe. But you know, the people are still learning about Tesla. It's important that Tesla maybe the, do some advertising proposed by uh, shareholders for their uh, next uh, shareholder meeting. So people know, people learn, and people are educated. Then probably Tesla will sell millions of cars a year instead of just 500,000 cars a year. So they use a lot of stock footage in the segment, but uh, there seems to be a few new shots on the plant inside and out. Also, there are a few nice tidbits of information. For example, they say that the current production capacity stands at 13 million individual battery cells per day at the bro about um, uh, 17 uh, watt hour per cell. That's 221 megawatt hour of battery cells per day or 80 gigawatt hour per year, which would be a big increase from the latest disclosed official capacity at Gigafactory Nevada. Do you remember that in 2016 Elon said that the exit rate of cells from Gigafactory will be faster than bullets from a machine gun? Elon turned out to be right. Extremely fast machine guns like the M134 minigun can fire about 6,000 rounds per minute. 13 million cells over a 24-hour period comes out to a little over 9,000 cells per minute. It seems that Gigafactory Nevada uh, seems like the most logical place for Tesla friends to build their own batteries in the United States, right? They have tons of real estate there already assigned to that purpose. And there is a huge lithium deposit very close, just a few hundred miles that is about to start being mined, I believe. And I'm sure Tesla got in 
on it. Nevada's Lithium Valley could provide domestic supply for Tesla batteries. Lithium, friends, isn't going to become the new oil, regardless of what the pandering pundits of the popular press say. Um, however, there is no question that demand for the lightweight stuff is growing quickly and that much of the current supply comes from outside the United States. Tesla is believed to import much of its uh, much of the lithium in uh, it uses from Australia and South America. There there are strong economic and environmental reasons to develop more domestic sources. Thankfully, just a couple of hundred miles north of Gigafactory One, near the Oregon Nevada border, there is an area that some are calling Lithium Valley, which could contain a huge and easily exploitable trove of lithium. This isn't mere serendipity. One of the reasons Tesla chose Nevada as the site of the Gigafactory was the proximity to potential sources of lithium and other minerals. In a recent article and accompanying video, NBCLX storyteller Chase Kane takes us to the site of an ancient volcano where a Canadian mining company has identified what it says is the largest lithium deposit in the North America. Volcano Dr. Thomas Benson confirmed the mother load of lithium. His company, Lithium Americas, is now seeking a permit from the federal government to mine lithium in the area known as Tucker Pass near the town of Orovada, Oregon, Nevada. Get it? Lithium Americas says its proposed mine could supply the entire U.S. demand for lithium through 2068 or longer. Furthermore, the lithium could be extracted here with less environmental damage than other sites. The Tacker Press, the mineral-rich paid dirt, is right on the surface and lithium can be separated from the ore using a water-based process. Lithium mines in South America, which extract the element from salt flats, have been criticized for high water consumption and other negative impacts. Lithium America's president Alex Zavatsky told NBC that the company's process needs comparatively small amounts of water and that it can be carbon natural. We recycle a lot of water, we actually generate carbon-free energy from our process and will have an excess that will sell to the grid. So Tesla can really take advantage of this for the Gigafactory's battery cells. Dr. Nathan Menser, an expert in geology and mining from Michigan Technological University, agreed that Lithium America's process appears to be an improved over exciting, uh, of improvement over existing methods. In terms of comparison, the excess, uh, existing Lithium salt bring operations, this project will benefit from an economy of scale effect that could allow it to produce Lithium in a greener manner than is currently being done. Will the government approve the mining operation? Establishing domestic supplies of lithium is an idea that has support on both sides of the aisle. The administration, including lithium on recently compiled list of 35 critical minerals necessary for national security. Republican Senator Liza Murskovsky of Alaska recently spoke on the issue of reducing dependence on foreign sources of critical minerals. And Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren, who generally opposes extractive industries on federal land, can see making exceptions for minerals that support renewable energy. If we need to make exceptions because there are specific minerals that we've got to have access to, then we'll locate those and we do it not in a way that just is about to the profits of giant industries, but in a way that is sustainable for the environment. Dr. Menser agrees that the environmental benefits of lithium ion batteries outweigh the risks. In the full life cycle impact context of lithium batteries compared to the life cycle impacts of the fossil fuels that they will replace, the impact of the lithium extraction step is a necessary but lesser evil when compared to the extraction of other energy minerals, Dr. Menser says. Friends, according to NBC, officials at the Department of the Interior have suggested that the Tacker Pass lithium mine could win approval later this year and that mining operations could begin by 2022. 
if they proceed with Austin with the Cybertruck, I mean Texas, it's 1,700 miles from Reno. It might make sense to stop with remaining build out of the Reno Gigafactory and have a second battery production facility in Texas. I could see Tesla building batteries at the Texas Gigafactory too. I think it's safe to assume that both the Cybertruck and Semi and the new Roadster will need the new cells to meet the specs and the prices Tesla has quoted. But what about Tesla Model S? What about Model X? Don't they seem in need of battery overhaul too? And Model 3 and Model Y? Will they never get Tesla's own cells? I don't know. What do you think, friends? What do you think about these things? Are you in excited to see Tesla uh, now producing 30 million battery cells per day? Is that a lot or that's only 30% of the capacity of Gigafactory? Let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, please, this is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel. Ring the bell so you don't miss my next story about Tesla. And I'll see you in our next report. God bless you. Take good care of each other and your families. And see you soon. Peace be with all of you.